Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricket Tea with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In this quick tutorial, I will be showing you the step-by-step -step process for how to put a design on a t-shirt using sublimation. I have a checklist. I will make sure to add a picture of this checklist to this tutorial so you will be able to follow it step by step and check off every single thing. There are only 10 steps. I am wearing the final product. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first step in how to sublimate a t-shirt for beginners. I know you guys love lists. We have a list. Gather your materials, all right? You'll need a sublimation printer. I will be using my Epson 2760 EcoTank uh, printer. You'll need sublimation paper. The paper that I use every single time is the one that looks like this. It is the A sub paper, 125 grams. You'll need sublimation ink. I've only used Hippo ink. I love this brand. So, uh, I've been using this one since July and it has not run out at all. Um, you will need a polyester shirt. For this tutorial, I will just be using the Cricut brand of t-shirt. I'm using a men's medium because I don't like the V-neck cut on the lady's shirt. Um, you will need a lint roller, so I'll use a lint roller. You'll need butcher paper. I'm using the one that's in this box. I like this one because it comes with a cutter. You'll need a heat press that heats up to um, at least 400 degrees. I'll be using my StarCraft 15 by 15 clamshell. You'll need heat resistant tape. I like to use the Cricut brand, but there are other brands of heat resistant tape. And you will need a sublimation design. For this tutorial, I will be using this design right here. I've already printed it out and I will show you my full process. So that is all of step one. For steps two through four, I will be on the computer, so I won't be on the screen, but you will be able to see me. Um, for step two, it says, if you are using Cricut Design Space, you will upload the design and then resize it to 9.25 by 6.75, and then you'll turn your heat press on and get it set, you know, let it start heating up. I am not using Cricut Design Space because I want my image to be bigger. And you saw, you saw my image. So I am going to be using Microsoft Word for this tutorial. And you'll just see that I'm going to move the margins out as far as I can. And my image will be um, bigger. You could also use Silhouette Studio if you wanted to. When my image is resized, I will, I'm not going to click make it. That will be if I was using Cricut Design Space. But I will just click print because I've been using Microsoft Word, you'll see it. And then step four on the computer, click continue, click send to printer, proceed with your print settings, make sure to turn on use system dialog. Okay, for everything else, steps five through 10, I'll be back on the camera and we'll go through those together. So I'm gonna go ahead and check off number one, which was gather the materials because we've already done that. I am in Microsoft Word and the first thing that I am going to do is um, change the layout of my design. Right now, the layout is the orientation is in portrait mode. I am going to change it to landscape, okay? Because I want my paper to be wide. The next thing that I'll do is just resize the margins. So I'll just, you know, bring them out as far as I can go in Microsoft Word because I want my image to fill, fill up this whole paper. All right, and then I will click insert. I will insert a picture from this device. I already have the device. I already have the image downloaded from Design Bundles. I will put a link to the um, file that I purchased from Design Bundles. All right, and then I will just resize my image. I will just, I'm just going to bring it out as far as I can and bring it up as far as I can. Okay, let me resize the margins over here. Okay, and resize the margins over here too. I want this thing to be as stretched out as it can be. All right, I'm not that far down. All righty, so I am maximizing the full sheet of paper. There is nothing left over. Okay, and then when I finished, that was number two. It says once you get it as big as you want, now you're going on to number three. Number three would be to actually click print. 
Okay, and I am going to send mine to my Epson 2760. And I, in this case, I will click Printer Properties. Okay. And I'm going to choose my sublimation preset, which will mirror it for me. So I'm not going to mirror it. I'm not going to flip it in Microsoft Word. I have my sublimation preset to mirror on. And I keep this print preview box checked. Okay, if you haven't been doing that, I highly, highly suggest you do that because that will help you not waste paper because sometimes we think it's right and then it prints and it's not right. So I've been doing that for every single project now. Click, make sure that print preview box is on. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. Okay, and then I'm going to click print. Okay, and it says your margins are pretty small. Do you still want to print? I'm going to click yes. Okay, and so this is what my image looks like and nothing is cut off. It looks perfect. And that's why I like to keep the print preview box on. So then I will click print. Okay, and in this case, I'm not actually going to click print because I've already printed mine and I showed it to you. Do you want to cl close in the preview? Do you want to print the document? I'm gonna click no. Okay, because I've already printed it. All right, so now I am going back on camera. Okay, I'm back on camera and we have finished step two in Microsoft Word. We have the image resized. Um, we finished the print settings. Okay, and now number five says to um, put the printed image on the heat press plate. Do not close it. Just let the ink dry on the plate for approximately one minute. So I have my image on the plate. I am going to close the plate down just a little bit for about a minute and let the ink completely dry. I'm not going to close it all the way. I know that it's dry because it's actually been sitting. All right, and then so I will put a check next to that. Hopefully you can see that. That was number five. Number six, prepare the shirt by adding heat to it for a few seconds, going over it with the lint roller and placing a piece of butcher paper inside to protect the back of the shirt. So let me go ahead and open my shirt. says to go over it with a lint roller. So I am going to do just that. And the purpose of that is to make sure you don't have any of those blue fibers that are invisible until you add <laughs> heat. All right, let me remove my image. I'm going to put my shirt on the heat press. Just let it heat for a few seconds. All right. That looks really, really good. Now I am going to, let's see where we are on our list. Number, that was number six. We've done that. Let me check that off. Number six, prepare the shirt. Number seven, cut off any excess paper and place the image face down. Add heat resistant tape to keep the, to keep the image in place. Now I am not going to cut off any of the excess image because there is not really anything else, anything I really want to cut off. But if I did want to cut it off, like I could cut around here, but I'm not. I'm just going to put the butcher paper inside the shirt to protect the back of the shirt so that none of the ink goes through the back of the shirt. So that was number, we're still on number seven. So I'm going to put the image face down on the shirt, just kind of making sure I'm eyeballing it to make sure that it's centered and hopefully it's centered enough. All right, and now I will add a few pieces of the heat resistant tape just to keep it in place. Okay, all right, 
You know what I did not do was put a piece of butcher paper on my plate, but I think it's okay because I added butcher paper inside the shirt and that should protect the plate too. Let me see how far down. Oh yeah, we're good. I think we're good. Okay. And I will add a piece of, let's see. Let's go back to our list. Number seven was to cut off any excess paper and put the image face down. We did that. Number eight was to place a piece of butcher paper on top of the plate. I did not do that, but I put paper inside the shirt and I think we're okay. Then it says to also put a piece of butcher paper on top of the shirt. So let me do that. Okay. And then I'm gonna check that off. And then it says to press your shirt at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Hopefully you can see that. I am going to go ahead and press it. And my timer is already set for 60 seconds. Okay, so it beat. And number 10 says to remove the butcher paper and the sublimation paper to uh, reveal your beautiful design. So <laughs> let's do that. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I can still see some of the little um, blue um, pieces of lint that I did not roll, but I still, I love it. I love how it came out. Let me um, get some better light over here so you can see it. It is amazing. I love how it came out. I'm going to um, go ahead and put it on and share my final thoughts with you. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow this process. I realized that when I was recording, you might not have been able to see the picture of the checklist very well. So, you know, like I said, I will make sure to add a picture of this checklist so you can screenshot it or you can print it or however you can get to it. If you are in my Facebook group, it is available for you to access free of charge. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. I do have a Facebook group. It is called Cricut Crafting with Delonda. We would love for you to join us over there. It is a very kind group, a very helpful group. They are encouraging and we don't do dumps. We don't do sales. We are there to share work related to Cricut crafting and sublimation product projects and things like that. Um, if you are trying to join the group, make sure you answer all the questions and everything else will be taken care of. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.